You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Do you have a big family? Um, I would say I got a lot of half brothers around the like mm. half brothers, half sisters. My dad was Shaga. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> he was active basically. <laughs> First day I signed my deal, one of my uncles, yeah, came to my house and he started going through my trainers, innit? And he's like, what, can I have these trainers? He's pointing at like my lubes. And I said, nah. And I was like, you can have them, some Adidas trainers. He's like, nah, I want the lubes. And then I was like, no. And then he sat down, he's like, yo, I've got this business idea, yeah. I've never, um, I haven't seen him in like 10 years before this. And then he's just like, yeah, I've got this business idea. Can you give me 30,000? I was like, like a lot of my team, I had to let them go. Do you get what I'm saying? We had, um, problems behind the scene and it's like I've been helping people like like I've got a soft heart in it like I've had friends that I've tried to bring along the way and help like catch up because I'd rather employ my friends than employ some stranger from the industry do you get what I'm saying yeah. and then at the same time it's like the same care that I'm giving out to people I'm not receiving do you get what I'm saying because obviously I had my own stresses throughout the year like like yo um what's happening next like where's the um where do we go next and like i'm having like my nervous breakdowns do you get what i'm saying i'm like what's going on and the people that i thought would be there weren't there boom we're on how are we, Brad? Today's guest, we've got Ka Ka Hardly Caprio. How are we? I'm good, man. I'm good. Can't good. complain. I told you, you're a bit bored, but yeah. make it work. Good to see you. Good to see you, bro. Flying, mate. Top 10 single last year. Top of the pops. Yeah. Names everywhere. Trying, trying to do my bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time. How's life been? Um, recently, like I said, it's just, you know, lockdown tier four has been a bit boring. Obviously, I've done like my project. I've um, been working on my project. On my end, it's finished now. Like, like signed and sealed, just needs to be delivered. Um, so now I'm just kind of just at home, you know. I'm watching yeah. movies, bro. Just bare Netflix. I'm watching The Office and like Bojack Horseman. Just bare random stuff. Mm -hmm. Just try to pass the time. Just trying to pass the mm -hmm. time. Jog in the morning and that gotta stay fit. But that's about <laughs> it. Like, yeah. yeah, you've had that very interesting life as well. You're not just people might just see you as a rapper or a singer or whatever yeah. musician. You've also got a degree. You yeah. also come from, is it Sierra Leone? Um, Sierra Leone, yeah, 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 yeah. So I always go back to the start with my guest brother, kind of where you grew up and how it all began. Um, so I was born in Sierra Leone. Um, when Around the time when I was born, there was a war in it. So um, my mum and dad fled the country. We moved um, to Germany when I was like one years old, stayed in Germany till I was like four years old. Um, not much like recollection of that period in time, but when we moved to the country, we um, moved to Crystal Palace. In it, there's an area in London, South London, Crystal Palace. Stayed there with like my um, one of my grandmas, and just kind of um, they started working. We moved to New Addington, that's in Croydon, and that's where I spent like most of my years. In it, from um, four years old to or five years old to nineteen. In it. Um, so I don't know if you know about Croydon, it's like just um, an area in South London. Yeah. And then um, for the most part, it's council estate, grew up in a council estate. Um, um, you know, I would say like, it's one of them places where the neighbors, everyone kind of knows each other. It's a small town, isn't it? New Addington's like part of um, Croydon Borough. And then like the area that I lived in, like we had like, some travellers um, on like the cul-de-sac next to me and then our, there was two estates and like everyone just knew each other. So when we were growing up, it was kind of like a community. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? And was then, a lot of rough times though? Or was it tough or was it you keep away from the troubles? Um, I think younger, it was, um, you don't know as much. Do you get what I'm saying? Because everyone you're growing up around is poor. I think for me, when like I started realizing it was like different is um, 
I think one of my earliest memories is when I was coming home from um, like off some after school club, innit? And I was, um, they asked me, oh, where do you live? And I was like, um, I pointed at my estate. I was like, that big house. And they're like, that's not a house. I was like, no, the big house. And they're like, that's not a house. And then I was like, what is it? They're like, it's a flat. And I was like, I'm like five, six years old. I'm like, what's a flat? Like, mm-hmm. do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't really know, know too much in it. And then I think that's the sort of stuff that slowly and surely you start picking up like your situation and where you're from. And then I think it things get put in your face and it like, okay, um, even like away from TV, just like some people in your school are a bit more well off. And then I went secondary school. I went to a school in Bromley, um, which is like quite middle class. And that's when I really like, notice the difference you get what i'm saying yeah but you're treated different because you were from sierra leone um i wouldn't say it was because sierra leone but i think like you know london's come a long way in it in terms of race um in terms of like multiculturalism in it so new adelton was heavily like white in it so when i started primary school it was i was the only black kid in like year one in it and then by year three there was um, two other black kids but obviously um, a lot of the people there were travellers as well innit? so I feel like travellers and black people as far as my community tend to get on innit? and then um, as you get older and um, say so when I went to the secondary school in Bromley I don't think it was like outwards racism it's just like micro aggressions innit? like little passing comments or it's like ignorance you know because kids will be kids in it they don't know what's going on behind home and it's just like oh like um without throwing two that like, without throwing people in the bus i think it's like when things like roots come up you know like the um the movie roots and it's like people start saying stupid things not to me really like i kind of i was temperamental in it like i had a bad temper but for the most part people would like see what they can get away with with you. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Just pushing the boundaries to see how you would react. Yeah. Did you suffer much racism growing up as a teenager? Um, like I said, the, um, I wouldn't say the usual, like I got arrested when I was 13, like the first time in Bromley. What for? Um, wrong, like, wrong place, wrong time. They profiled me. They were like, oh, we're looking for a black man now and I was like I'm 13 like, <laughs> I got, I'm 13 yeah. and then they brought the dogs out they put like had my face flat on the floor, floor at the bus stop um, I was like I'm in a purple jacket innit and he was just um, the officer was just being mad rude he was just like oh if you done that where I'm from I would have knocked you out I'm like bro I don't even know what's going on do you get mm. what I'm saying um, and then like just look it's always micro stuff it's never it's hard to catch someone do it outwardly in it i feel like the personality that i have i have a very like i'll address you do you get what i'm saying and i don't think a lot of people re- reciprocate it um but it's always like little snide things you get it yeah yeah but people always try and push your boundaries and to yeah. see your reaction and and if you give them an inch they'll take a mile yeah this is a society we're in it's not just about racism it's about so many different things business um, do you have a big family um, I would say I got a lot of half brothers around the like mm. half brothers, half sisters. My dad was Shaga. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> he was active, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but are you in connection with any of them, you are you just um, doing your own thing? So like family's a bit disjointed, yeah. you know, like when success comes, it's like, can you pay for this? Yeah. Can you do this? Like I've got a mad story. Like the first day I signed my deal, one of my uncles, yeah, came to my house and he started going through my trainers, innit? And he's like, what, can I have these trainers? He's pointing at like my lubes. And I said, nah. And I was like, you can have them, some Adidas trainers. He's like, nah, I want the lubes. And then I was like, no. And then he sat down. He's like, yo, I've got this business idea. Yeah, I've never, um, I haven't seen him in like 10 years before this. And then he's just like, yeah, I've got this business idea. Can you give me 30,000? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I've got this shoe shop. Like, you should invest in it. I was like, no, like, this is the first mm-hmm. day I've got money. Like, 
leave me alone in it and i feel like those sort of pressures with anyone that gets like successful um i would say it's a very like it's an african trait in it like once you do well it's like they want you to take care of them before you've done anything yeah. do you get what i'm saying yeah. that's the thing that's difficult with success yeah. because even though you're doing well people mm. think you're multi-millionaire you can yeah. save the world and really you're still trying to create a business you need income to create more business 100%. so it is difficult but people just see people think they see you on the tv and that's it you've made that mm. this is only the beginning of your journey yeah but man. again it's it's very cutthroat and as the older you'll get you start to realize that the ones who are there you, you already know who the ones are real and who yeah, the ones are man. fake as fuck they always come into your life but you'll probably know for them get go 100 percent it's the ones when you're struggling who are still there are the ones who I help yeah 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 do you know what I mean and that is difficult because I'm soft as shit so I try and help everyone is it? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. All right, by the time that I um got like a bit of success I've already got used to saying no in it mm -hmm. like I got used to saying no obviously I'm a bit I'm a bit soft natured as well so if you give me a sob story I might like do you get what I mean yeah. it might make me cave in but yeah. for the most part like I've I'm protective of myself in it mm -hmm. and I've got like my friend Sam he's a good friend that like, he'll make sure that I'm not doing too much in it because sometimes they you can question if maybe you're being a bit cold in it like I, I might overthink and say raw am I doing too little or am I being too selfish yeah but like it's like difficult said, though you got, you yeah because the DMs are thick as fast as well everybody yeah. can you share this can you donate here yeah <laughs> and you don't reply and then it's you're a fucking scumbag, you forgot yourself. And it's yeah. just, there's just so much that you can't do everything. You yeah. don't mind doing the odd thing. Your schooling then, you had a, you clearly had a good education. You clearly had a great upbringing because yeah. you, you ended up going to uni as well. Yeah, so um, I would say schooling, I was fortunate. Like, I think I was one of the fortunate people from my area, isn't it? Like I said, most people from New Addington stay in New Addington, isn't it? And then for whatever reason, I think my mum might have done like a dress fraud in it to get me into a better school because yeah. <laughs> I've done good grades, but the school's in Bromley and that now when I think about it and catchment areas, I shouldn't have been able to go to that school. Like I used to like travel like an, um, an hour and a bit every morning to get to school in it. And then it kind of just showed me the other side of life in it. It kind of showed me, oh, okay, this is how kids are living on this side of life. So it kind of allowed me to have more ambition because I know what's out there. Do you get mm. what I'm saying? So fortunately in school, I just always kind of stayed, stayed focused in it. Like I'm, um, I'm quite good academically, to be honest with you. Like I'm, um, I've never really had a problem. I learned a lot when I was a kid. Innit? Yeah. So you had a lot of drive from a young age, traveling yeah. to school one hour to go to school one hour back. Yeah. So straight hustle straight away. Straight, straight away. Yeah. Innit? Yeah. Do you think if you went to the school that was closest to you, your life would be different now? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Because even like the mannerisms, like like I said, in I used to have a bad temper in it. So like in year seven, I was just fighting everyone, and fortunately, the way they are in Bromley, it's like you can fight about it and move on, shake hands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in like in Croydon and in ends, you're fighting someone, you're holding on to that. Do you get what I'm saying? Everyone's got pride, everyone's got ego. like ego, like man are just coming back around, like you're getting stabbed. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not, it's not anything. Like it got to the point. It's like I know more people that have been stabbed than probably not. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then it's like it's there in the circle, whereas they're in that circle, that continuous circle of violence, whereas fortunately, like mine, like my issues were few and far between. Like you still have them, but not as much that yeah. you're caught in them. Do you get what I mean? How hard was it once you started getting good grades, once you started yeah. learning in school and seeing that it's two different worlds, even though it's just a couple of miles up the road. Yeah. When did you start learning, right, you wanted to do something with your life and make something productive happen? Um. So I always kind of said that like, probably in school was a shit period for me do you get what i mean so it was like just mad shit because like we would go um say after christmas like i would never get anything on christmas in it and everyone in my class would come back like yeah i got this i got a ps3 i got this and i'm like they're like oh what do you get and i'm like 
I don't know really about it. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think I've always kind of, I used to search up things on Google, like how to make a million. Like I was looking into trading when I was like 13. I was like, yo, I need money in it. Like I need to make some money because it's, I think being poor around poor people isn't as bad as being poor and seeing like rich or well off kids. You get what I'm saying? It kind of burns a bit more because you know what you're missing out on. So, um, I think from young, I always just, I was a bit obsessive in it. I was like, yo, I got to make something of my life. I got to make something of my life because like no one else had done it. Do you get what I'm saying? My older brother wasn't doing anything like um, productive. Do you get what I'm saying? So it kind of all fell on me sort of thing. Like the pressure was on me. Like my mum would always say, yeah, we want you to be a doctor. We want you to be like the usual stuff. And it's kind of installed that if you don't, you, I have no backup plan basically if I don't mm. do well there's no one there's no one for me to confide in or mm. like protect me so I yeah. need to get my but shit he doesn't just do well because I believe when you got mm. your degree yeah. you got your degree the mm. same month you got a record deal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that must have made your mum proud um so yeah, yeah, of course like it mm. was like a mad period in it because by that that time I said yo like I'm gonna were you going to think about leaving uni um, to do music nah so oh, you, I, all, you always want that the, the backup that um, yeah and like I learned accounting in it so yeah. I wanted to know what's happening with my money for when I do become successful in rap because I was like yeah I'm gonna do it so let me just not understand money a bit better because you know they don't teach you about tax they don't teach you about anything in yeah, like, money management nothing yeah, in school nothing in school in it so I was just always like yo like I'm gonna be like over everything so it's like because rap is like quick money do you get what I'm saying so a lot of people tend to lose it and I was just like I can't be one of them people that like, I'm so paranoid of like going broke like I'm like I never want to like, I never want to be in that position ever again mm -hmm. basically so when you started when did you start really getting into the rap game um I would say it First year uni, so first year uni, I said to myself, if I don't get 100,000 views by the um, end of this year, I'm going to quit. And that that's how I would um, market in it. I was just like, mm. let me just try my best. But if I don't do this, then I'll call it a day because the trajectory that I want isn't... Um, the trajectory that I need, sorry, is like, if I can't get that, then I'm just like playing with myself basically. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Or I'm being a bit deluded. If everyone's saying, yo, you're shit. <laughs> not, people then, say that, but everybody, no matter how successful you they, become they anyway. They do, innit? But I was just like, yo, if I can't get this many people to say you're yeah. sick, I'm just going to pack it in, innit? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to be deluded, innit? And then by second year, I was just like, all right, cool. I've done a hundred thousand. Like, yo, I can do that. Like, 200,000 or maybe like do you get what I'm saying yeah. so I started building my own channel in second year of uni after second year and I was like um, I started it with some Hollywood series where I rap on Daniel Bedingfield and that done like 100,000 views on my own channel so I was like oh, okay cool mm -hmm. and then third year I was still in the mix in it because by this point UK rap didn't have a lot of money to be honest with you it was still a very new scene in it and I was talking to uh, my friend, who's my manager now, Shoals, and I was like, bro, you got to help me with my CV, man. <laughs> I was like, we've got to get my CV ready because if if it's not looking like I'm going to make money from this, I've got, like, I've got responsibilities, do you get what I'm saying? And I need to like take care of myself, I need to take care of those around me. So let's get ready. Um, he was helping me with my CV and then I made a song unsigned with um, an artist, One Asin, and I was just like, yo, I've put everything into this song. Like, this sounds like a perfect song. If they, if they, don't, if they don't take this one, then fuck it. Like, gee, I'll just go off and be an accountant. Do you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And maybe one day I'll, I'll come back to like, um, to like, who knows in it I might come into the music game a different way but I was just like yo if they don't fuck with this I'm calling it a day mm -hmm. but I didn't give it much thought after that because I was like this is the one did you believe yeah 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 like mm -hmm. we were so sure that like, that's why um it was the first music video that we flew out for and that we were just like yeah this is the one yeah 100%. how hard is it to make it in the rap game especially in the UK um 
You see names popping up everywhere, but they never last. Yeah, I think making it might be easier than lasting, innit? So it depends it depends what everyone calls making it, innit? Yeah. I think it's like it's a lot of it's a mental game, I think. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. It's more a mental game. How self aware are you? Like do you know what you bring to the table? Things like that. And a lot of artists don't look at it like that. They just it's a very ego driven thing at the same yeah. time. Do you get what I'm saying? Because the rap game's kinda gangster rap, but you've went yeah. to uni, you've got a degree, you've hundred percent. Because I love Akala. Yeah, thank I think you, he's bro. um there's so many great people out there that do their shit and that's mm. the stigma it's attached to. Yeah. Rap is gangsterism, is is a uh, prison yeah. and popping champagne and all the bullshit <laughs> of the day. Do you know what I mean? People yeah. came in for the fast life. Obviously the Americans you get fifty cent in the game and shit mm, like that mm, have, mm. have took it to new levels. But there's money to be made everywhere. It's just 100%. how successful. It's all about passion and how much you love it. Yeah. When you started writing your raps, do you, do you, you seem to love it? You seem to enjoy it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like I saw, like I just liked rapping in it when I was younger, and I was like, I gave it more thought as I get as I got older in it, and I was just like, do you know what? Like a lot of like gangster rappers don't have peace of mind. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like you might. Even if you're successful, you're mad paranoid. Like you're looking around, you're not even enjoying yourself. Like even nowadays, when you see like a lot of rappers, they wear ballys. Like they want peace in it. Like like as much as they're rapping all this violence, a lot of them don't want to live their life in fear. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was just like, do you know what? As much as I've grown up in so and so, like if I talk about things that like, if I all if I glorify violence more violence comes to me. Do you get what I'm saying? Because someone's looking around, like, you should see how man them are in the ends, innit? Like, when someone comes up rapping violent, they're like, oh, he's not about it. Like, he's not real. Da-da-da-da. Man them want to test you. And I'm like, do you know what? I don't want that to be my whole life. Like, that is dead, bro. Like, yeah. imagine I make money and then I don't even have peace of mind, like, to just wear like my jewellery, like, you know, you always hear of rappers getting robbed and you hear of that like, rappers end up in this incident and it's like, how the fuck are you going that like, gold and platinum and you can't just walk down the road? Yeah. You get what I mean? And mm -hmm. I was like, that's stupid. I don't want that for my, like, my life, innit? Yeah. Because like, you went platinum twice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which are most viewed? Is it Best Life? Best Life, yeah. Over 30 million? Yeah, yeah, How yeah. is it when you hit... A monster like that. How does that make you feel when um, you were chasing a hundred thousand to then? So by that point, we were just living in it. Like so, like even how the song came about, we were just over the moon in it, and um, we knew. Like I had that song not too long after unsigned the first breakthrough one, and we were like, yeah, this one's this one's out. Like this one's out the park in it. So we were just living our life a bit in it do you get what i'm saying just being young and like excited and we just knew man like we said we got to do a mad video um with a mad villa we got to look like we're living our fucking best life innit? <laughs> and then even the only thing with the story there was um a song that came out cardi b and chance the rapper and it was called Best Life. And I remember calling Ace and I was like, fuck's sake. I was like, why the fuck have they named it Best Life, man? And then we were like, do you know what though? Our one's better. Like ours, our Best Life is better. And no one even really, I don't know how it done in America, but no one talks about the Cardi B <laughs> and Chance the Rapper uh -huh. one. You get it? Yeah. yeah. What, kind of, who, who, what kind of people have you worked with so far? Um, throughout the industry yeah. or musicians? The last few years, the mu um, musicians. Um, you get a lot of characters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a yeah, lot, lot of characters. phony bastards as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you know, you know how people are. Like if you're hot, they're on you. Like yeah. they're calling you every day. And then if if they feel like oh, it's not gonna go well for you, they distance yourself mm -hmm. in it. But I was always kind of aware of that. Like I'm someone that watches interviews. I like to learn about what I'm getting into in it. And then obviously as well with rap, there's a lot of big kids. Like if you if we just call spades a spade, like a lot of people are like young and naive, innit? Like a lot of people might get their first advance and buy a watch. Like, do you get what I'm saying? You made 50k and you spent 30k on your watch and you just <laughs> bro, you see yeah. it, and it's like it's a shame, innit? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Because I don't 
I can't tell a man how what to do with their money. You can't tell someone what to do with their money. You just yeah. gotta let people make their own mistakes in it. And it's a shame, car. A lot of them don't know better because I I fortunately know better because I went uni and I went to like I was always kind of a bit more aware in it because of my situation, fortunately. And a lot of people like they come from down the road from me, so I'm like I get why you're like that, and yeah. it's a shame, isn't it? Mm-hmm. How have you handled that the fame that's coming with that, the success? Um, it has its stresses. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? I think for me, it's been a lot of. Um, I felt like lockdown helped me understand it a lot. So um, when everything slowed down, like I've I've finally like I went straight from uni to performing like doing eight, 80 shows in one quarter of the year and then just doing shows, 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 studio, studio, studio. So it never got like, it never got to settle in who, who, how people saw me. So I would still just go to the shop. Like my friends would be mad pissed. I'm like, bro, I'm going to the shop, it. And they're like, no, nah, you can't go to the shop. You're Hardy Caprio. I'm like, bro, I'm going to the shop. I want a Coke. And they're like, no, you're not going to the shop. I'm like, bro, it's not that deep. And they're like, you've got one of the biggest songs in the country. I'm like, it's not that deep. I don't care. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And But I think this year when everything slowed down, I was like, raw, I've done a lot. And it didn't even feel like that. Time just flew in it. Like it felt like a blur. Like you're going to shows, you're drinking, you're out the hotel by 7 a.m. You're at the next city. And it's like, I didn't even know what had happened, bro. Like I only took it fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I only took it in last year because of lockdown. Mm Because I'm always working. I don't even do holidays really. Like I done my first holiday last year. So, um, so I've never had the chance to be like, look back and think, this is what I've mm-hmm. done. So it's good to, the lockdown's yeah. actually made you appreciate it more. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So you, you need to be careful that you don't burn yourself out as well. But obviously, yeah. if you've got the business strategy on, mindset, you're thinking, yeah. this shit doesn't last forever. 100%. So you just try to cane it as much as you can, make as much capital as you can, mm. and then invest. Exactly That's what I'm that. trying to do anyway. But exactly again, man, that. it's fucking... You know that, you can't... Yeah. when. We all know that we shouldn't do it till we burn out, yeah. but we'll get as close as possible, yeah. won't it? <laughs> Nervous breakdown, yeah. spending all your money to survive in the hospital. It's difficult because I'm the same. I just want to work hard because mm. this shit doesn't last forever. I'll cane this for the next three to five years 100%. and then I'll smoke bomb. I'm, I'm disappearing because it is. It's an illusion yeah. as well. Yeah. But social media and success, it's, mm. people think you're living a high life, but they don't see the constant road trips I don't see the yeah. constant up early in the morning and, and putting in the hustle yeah well, yeah. where's the best city you've been in like a lot of the out of London cities go all the way off yeah. do you get what I'm saying mm. because I feel like where a lot of them don't know someone that knows you like they look at you and they're like raw I love this guy like this might be the only time I see him and mm-hmm. um, Liverpool goes off like Nottingham goes off like to be fair, where I'm fortunate, I think a lot of my music is feel good music, can it? So mm-hmm. people go like people go to the shows, they're happy. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not really doing like um like sit down and listen music. I'm doing let's turn the fuck up music. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, try to get the crowd pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, we've had a lot of mad ones, Malior, um, like the Greece, like a lot of the Greece um party countries, in it, they go off as well. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you love to work with? Ah, uh, um, there's a variation. Um, different people for different reasons. I would say Sway Lee. So, um, yeah, I'd like to work with Sway Lee. I just think he's sick, like, melodically. He's another person that does, like, he's, like, sick at party anthems. Um, who else? Uh, 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 uh. I think just to tick it off my list, like in terms of like personal favorite artist, Ed Sheeran. I don't yeah. know how it sound, mm-hmm. but like I like Ed Sheeran a lot. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? He just says what's on his mind, innit? Like, and I appreciate that. Like, yeah. as an artist, I think just brutal honesty. Yeah. I like he's that turned into one of the biggest artists, if not the biggest in the world. Yeah, for where he's came from, and he's mixed it with so many different now. And yeah. I think that's what it's great about it. It's just able to fit in mm. with every kind of sort of scenery and music like he's collabed with so many people and everyone's been a smash hit yeah yeah that's like talent for me that you can work with people that's so off the cuff that people don't see it 100 but you see it you see there's something there and 
the way you're going, I don't see why it shouldn't happen in the next yeah. two to three years. We hope, man. Yeah, that's and all you can do in life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What do you think? How are you doing it without the crowds and shit? How are you feeling that that with the concerts and shit getting cancelled? How um, how's that a, affecting you? It's like a bit, like I said, it's just boring, isn't it? But fortunately for me, I think I needed this as well. Like it let me... Like it just let me refocus. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that if if the lockdown didn't happen. Like I would still be like fighting, like overthinking things. You get what I'm saying? It's like it let me catch up with like, yo, this is who I am. I like, rah rah rah. Because I think another thing that like, 2020 for me career wise wasn't my proudest year. Cause I was like, yo, like I done a lot of decisions that were based out of insecurity. Like I released a lot of music that I'm like, why did I do that? Like, but I just was lost in it. I was so lost in like so so many outward opinions. Cause obviously, um, I'd only recently moved out of Croydon, in it, um, maybe a uh, a year before um, a year before lockdown. But obviously, I still go to Croydon a lot, in it. And then it's like, I think with the benefit of hindsight, I wouldn't have done that. Do you get what I'm saying? I would have surrounded myself with like better energy. Do you get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people from your area kind of don't wish the best for you. Do you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. they, it's always like, oh yeah, you done this, but you could have done this. Oh, you done yeah. this, you could have done this. Oh, don't forget where you came from. You know that one, like, don't yeah. forget where you came from. Did it look like, oh, yeah, that's little Hardy, like, but he's doing like the pop songs. Why is little Hardy doing the pop songs? And I'm just yeah. like, and I'm like thinking, and the way I'm an overthinker sometimes, it's like, I might have internalized that. Do you get what I'm saying? And then I start doing tunes that like, we already established that like, I don't care to be a gangster rapper, but I'm there like making the songs that like, sprinkling it a bit, a bit yeah, more aggressive yeah. than I need to be. And I'm like, why am I doing <laughs> yeah, that? Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? But that's just outside noise. Fuck yeah. everybody else. Hundred percent. Look how far you've come as well. We're just educating yourself, understanding the music yeah. game's just like business. Hundred percent. Everything's business. I've, yeah. I've seen rappers out there that are fucking terrible, <laughs> but they know how to manipulate the market. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just straight business. And mm. fuck the outside noise. Mm. You've not forgot where you've came from because you want better for yourself. 100%. What happens is your spotlight will shine on other people's misfortunes. Mm. So they'll start blaming you. They'll hate you and they don't even know you. Oh, uh, bro, trust me. It's part of the life, yeah. isn't it? Like, you see, you, it happens, isn't it? You can't help it, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, people are angry and <laughs> I can't, what can I do, bro? Yeah. Exactly, you've just got mm. to kick on. The boy from um, Love Island, mm. how did that come about? Were you worried about that with obviously the Love Island background? You smashed it, that was your first um, top 10 tune. Yeah, so someone that I know shouted me and said, yo, you need to do a song with Wes. Like, and I was like, no, I don't. I was like, no, yeah. I don't, bro. And then he said, nah, this song is serious. And I was just like, he's like, I'm going to give him your number and he can call you. And um, so and so, so so and forth in it. And then he's called me and he's FaceTime me in it. He's FaceTime me. I'm in my kitchen. He's like, "Yo, Hardy, like I got this mad song for you." I was like, oh, "Fuck's sake!" <laughs> 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 and then he's like, "Yo, no, nah, let me just show it." Like he's uh, he's showing it to me. He's playing it. I'm like, "Yo, this song's kind of like I've heard it." I'm like, "Yo, it's kind of all right still." Mm -hmm. And then the chorus has come and he's like, "Foot down." I'm like, "Yo." what the fuck was that? And then he's played it like the whole minute. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I've got up. I'm like, bro, this song is mad. I'm like, this is mad. This is mad. This is mad, isn't it? And for me, like, I just care about the music, innit? I just care if the song is good. I don't care about who you are, anything. Just is your song good? And I was like, yeah, this song is hard. And I just jumped on it. I was like, yo, this song would even be good without man. So let me just put, let me just do what I need to do. I won't even try and make it about me in it. I'll just do a nice cool verse. Mm -hmm. You have your spotlight. And yeah, we'll do that. Do you get what I'm saying? Was that the back of your mind though? Because he's coming from Love Island. I was like, um, naturally like one of my friends um, brought that up. I was like, nah, don't care. I was like, I don't care. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because it's like, he can be like from Love Island, but he's good. Mm -hmm. And if I join, jump on it and say, this is good, I'm still Hardy Caprio, bro. Yeah. Like I stand by all of my decisions. Yeah. Is it a good song? 
Yeah. Like, do you get what I'm saying? What can anyone tell me about exactly. that? Do That's you get the main reason. Fair play to the kid, man. He's, he's took yeah. his opportunity. And it can't be, it must be so difficult. Mm. But you're from Croydon, so yeah. you know the battles you get. Coming from other Ireland, trying to be a rapper, 100%. people are going to fucking slaughter you. 100%. You know what I mean? Because it's got that stigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody that goes on that show, you know yourself, it is a wee bit of fame hungry, search, mm. self seeking kind of. But then to come into the music industry and the boy's done well and he got, was it number two, number three? Um, number three still, yeah. How was that feeling getting your first top 10? Well, we were like, it's mad, isn't it? But I, I won't say we didn't expect it. We we expected <laughs> it, bro. Like, we were like, this one's mad still. Mm. And we were like, do you know what? Like the stigma might, might make it hard for it to take off, but he's going to flip it and make it a W because it's like, it'll be like, oh, that's a Love Island kid. And then it's like, now it's like, oh, you know, he, he was on Love Island though. Like it became a W. Like mm -hmm. it's like, wow, like you're talented and you're from Love Island. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So he's like, yeah, like it, he flipped it. Yeah, from and good on him, man. Because yeah. a lot of people get into their shell after that kind of shit. The, the, the fire burns after six months. Yeah. He took, took all his opportunities. I don't know if he was on like dancing and ice, shit like that. And he's found an avenue and, he's, and now he's smashed that. So good on him, man. And 100%. Fair play for the top 10, brother. Thank you, bro. Top of the Pops as well. Was that New Year's yeah. special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. From that, Croydon to Top of the Pops. Yeah, no, it was a mad one, you know. I was like, yeah, this this shit, like, no one can hate on this shit. Do you get what I was saying? I'm on Top of the Pops, B. <laughs> like, you get it? Like, so, no, I was proud of that one still. This was a proud moment. It was like me finding myself again, innit? Like, he helped, he helped it, innit? So, mm -hmm. like, I'm grateful for it. Would you do another one together? Um, definitely, man. Definitely. No reason not to. Mm -hmm. What's the plans then for 2020? 2021? Um, so after, like I said, like after 2020's come um, and slowed down, it let me get my head back in the game. I was like, yeah, let me just make the like best body of work in it. Like I've been delaying it. I've been overthinking it. I made a, a fuck off body of work. I said, yo, I made some like project of the year kind of shit do you get what i'm saying i said this project when it lands everyone's gonna hear it and everyone's gonna love it you excited for that yeah 100 percent. are you handling everything well now how did that yeah. life change after top of the pops as well and getting a top 10 um life after it it's easy now do you get what i'm saying it's like i know like some people want to beg it it's like yo hardy like yo my guy my bro what happened like we lost touch i'm like Fuck you, niggas, man. <laughs> but it's calm, innit? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I get it. It's like, you're you're insecure. I'm not insecure no more. Like, I get it. Like, you just want to come over because you think niggas are winning over here and we are going to win. You get it? So, mm -hmm. like, for me, it's like not a thing about, oh, like, like, oh, I hope this year goes good. This year will go good. You get it? So yeah. I'm like, I'm a hundred, I'm a hundred percent confident in myself. Did you have me? to distance yourself from a lot of people while you're moving yeah, through the gears? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, like 2020, like I, um, a lot of my team, like a lot of my team, I had to let them go. Do you get what I'm saying? We had um, problems behind the scene and it's like, I've been helping people like, like I've got a soft heart in it. Like I've had friends that I've tried to bring along the way and help like catch up because I'd rather employ my friends than employ some stranger from the industry. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then at the same time, it's like the same care that I'm giving out to people, I'm not receiving. Do you get what I'm saying? Because obviously I had my own stresses throughout the year. Like, like yo, um, what's happening next? Like where's the... Um, where do we go next? And like, I'm having like my nervous breakdowns. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm like, what's going on? And the people that I thought would be there weren't there. Do you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. they they, they kind of said, yeah, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? So you were helping people who were struggling, but yeah. when you started struggling, no one was there? No, like, do you get what I'm saying? Except my like friend Sam, my um, co-manager shows, like not a lot of them were there. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm kind of going through it. Like I'm in this big house, but you're not there. Like none of my, not, they're not there. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when the shows are there, you're there. But when it's like the problems. Yeah. Nobody's not, saying, how are you basically? It's, yeah. What can we do? Or where can we go? Or where can you take us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we had um, label issues behind the scene, innit? Like me and my label, um, 
me and my label had a bit of problems in it. Like they didn't agree with the direction that I was going. I was just like, you lot are trying to make me do like best life like 300 times. I'm like, I'm not trying to do best life 300 times. I want, I want to be the artist that I want to be in it. And then naturally it was like, there was a lot of friction behind the scene. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like I'm very, um, I have a lot of integrity with my music. Like I don't, do it based off the hype or based on the trend. I just want to do it because I want to do it. Do you get what mm -hmm. I mean? And um, obviously they need it to sell. You know, I get it for them as a business and I want it to sell. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm like, I know how to sell for me. You lot let like, let me do my thing, innit? Yeah. And then we were like butting heads a lot. And then basically it was, it was like a very heated situation, innit? Where basically we didn't know if we the label was going to drop us or or um or we're staying on and we're trapped in like a you're on the shelf situation and that's when i was going through it the most in it so that's when i was like yo like to my old manager i was like yo like i need your help i need your help he's like oh like he's just not he's very passive he's not saying stuff in it like he's not really saying anything i'm hearing rumors like he's just i'm hearing rumors from other people or like my close friends to be honest so i won't even call them rumors like my close friends are telling me like yo he's doing this behind your back he's doing this behind your back i said cool like i'll let you go in it he's um the day before um the day when i fired him he said yo you're not getting out of that contract the next day i had a new contract it was um, like it was like out of a movie. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like I got the bit, the best contract of my life. I'm in the best space of my life, and it's like the people that it's like you know what they say about some people aren't ready to follow you into the next part of your journey, and mm -hmm. it felt like yeah. that really. To go through it, the next level in life, what happens is when people are here, you were here. Yeah. You would want so people want you to become a yes man. Jump yeah. through those hoops. We can give you the contract, but as soon as you start to hesitate and getting question marks, mm. they say, "Well, we're just going to shelf you. You're not. You need to stay in this label." And mm. what happens is people just pull back because they don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. You push through, and mm. look what happens. You got a bit of success. It doesn't happen for everyone. Getting a bigger contract with this shows you how cutthroat this industry is. Like, yeah. People get used. Yeah, 100%. Thrown out, burnt to the ground, travel everywhere, making money. You're making companies money. And then as soon as they think you're, you're, you're not there anymore, you're fucking kicked to the curb. Mm. Are you struggling with that, thinking that I could lose my le record label, that I'll just agree? Or were you so stubborn and so mm. understanding of what your own path was in life, you thought, fuck you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a stubborn guy, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So I'm like, do you know what, like... I made Hardy Caprio. Do you get what I'm saying? No mm. label made Hardy Caprio. No business exec made Hardy Caprio. It was me. Do you get what I'm saying? Like there was times in my career they wanted me to look like Stormzy. There was times that like, they want you to look like Jay Huss. And I was like, no, nah, I'll just do my own thing, innit? And um, so even when we were going through the tensions, I was like, what, do you want to drop me? Drop me then, drop me then. Like, because I'll go make money my own way, innit? Mm. And it's like, you don't want to drop me though. You don't want to drop me, innit? Like, cause even then uh, I had the song with Wes and like I said, I knew how it would do. So I was like, right, if you not drop me, like I'm going to go make a song with Wes anyway. Like, and this one's going to fuck up the charts and voila, it did, innit? So I'm kind of like, I trust my initiative. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I trust it like a hundred percent. And if like, if you're on my side, cool, if you're not, Fair enough, in it. We yeah. just we might have different Wash your paths. hands and move on. Yeah. So you've got good intuition, then you kind of know. Yeah, I'm the I'm, path in life. That you I'm all right. Do. I'm yeah. all right. We'll see, in it. Yeah. Like, let me not get too cocky, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about last year? You released so many songs. How many songs did you release? Um, what this last year? Yeah. Oh, like six, seven. But I don't like. I don't want to talk about <laughs> them. You know? Like I said, I, like I said, it was when I was in like You're a through, yeah, yeah. But that would have been your escape. Writing down songs, just getting them out there to take yeah. you away from all the battles you were going. This is a yeah. Like I always repeat it, but people will see you doing well and they'll see photos and videos of private planes, all the big cars. Mm. But you're still fucking battling. You could have five successful, five straight yeah. number ones, and you could still be battling. Hundred percent. This is a, the ups and downs of life, and this is what makes separates the winners from the losers is the ones who keep pushing through to keep mm. leveling up to keep taking shit to a new level it's, yeah life's a fucking roller coaster 100 percent. you know what i mean people will be seeing you you probably there's more the more success comes the more pressure mm -hmm. the more problems the more fucking pain 
the more leeches. Yeah, it's, it is difficult. Like, in your mind when you start having success when you start doing well when you start getting money and you think mm. you've completed life everybody's mm. going to be happy you're going to be sitting around a villa everybody yeah, at the no. pool fucking drinking beers smoking joints and before you know it, you're sitting in your kitchen yourself yeah 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 Aye, <laughs> that's, the I mean? that's, that's the rule that's the rule that you're just sitting in your kitchen you're like fuck yeah who the yeah. fuck where, where did it go wrong yeah and then you realise that have you got kids no, no. No, so everything I do is for my kids is, mm. is to leave a legacy, build businesses, and then it can leave on for other people to take over. And this is why I work so much as well. It's mm. only get one shot. I've fucked up so much that I know this is my shot to be sitting interviewing people and getting paid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's <laughs> mad. You know it? I mean, it's fucked up. But. Yeah, and like you said, you want to hold on to that. Yeah. And like, whilst this mm-hmm. in your hands, yeah, you want to capitalize off it. Why it? not milk it? Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Why not? It's them. Um, but success leaves clues as well. I just copy other people, put my own spin to it, and that's yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're yeah. going to make mistakes along yeah, the way. Yeah, I learn from it. Yeah. yeah. I'm and not shy away from them. Yeah. Leeches come, leeches go. It's as 100%. simple as that. I've been, I'm a fucking veteran at this now, so. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah, it, yeah. I, you got to talk the yeah, talk. Yeah, 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 Do you know what I mean? It's, um, I take you off with a smooth. Yeah, mm. another big song, is it Good and Tag? Yeah. How good. did that come about? Um, so, like, this was one of the first ones where I was getting, like, pushback in it. So, I like, I saw Dig that, um, like, Bouncer, his manager at the time, brought, like, said, yo, can you bring out Dig that to a show, in it? And I was like, yeah, that like, calm, in it? Like, man, I know Bouncer from um, Ends, in it, Credon. And I was just like, um, I'd heard some of Dig that before as well. Like, I heard him on a Heady One mixtape, and it was, like, his first song. And I was like, yo, this kid's sick. Like, I was like, this guy is fucking sick. And then, um, for me, I was just like, yo, like, drill was getting popular at the time, innit? And I was just like, yo, I'm personally not going to do drill, but le- how can I put my own spin on it? Because I want to work with him. And it's like, I can see where he's going. And it's like, yo, you just need a song. Like, you just need a song that cuts through, in it. Because I remember before when I was coming up, it's like, I was doing a lot of sick freestyles, but I couldn't get a song that for the charts. Do you get what I'm saying? And then I was like, now I've learned it. Let me let me like pass it to someone that might not know at the current moment in time, innit? So obviously he had a big song with Air Force, innit? But I was just like, yeah, like, cool. Let me just do a back-to-back, like structure the song, like like a pop song and then see how it does. And that was like one of our biggest songs, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's done amazing mm-hmm. as well. Like, yeah. yeah. How's the people who have been in the industry for a bit longer than you, five mm. years, 10 years, how do they treat you? Um, so I've got good relationships with them. They're like the smarter ones. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? You don't mm. really have bad, rela- um, you don't have bad relationships with um, people that have been around because they'll be like, all right, cool. You, you might not be where you should be yet, but you'll get there. Like, so like I've got a good relationship with like Crepton Conan, et cetera, like Tiny Tempo yeah. and whatnot. And we talk like Tiny's time to a time. good guy. Yeah, he's a good he's a great guy to be honest. He's one of the like, the first people to show me yeah. love in it. And it's like I, I don't mind asking for advice. I'm never too prideful to ask for mm-hmm. advice. I'm like, yo, man, like I'm going through this. Like how how did you do it? And I'll ask them, innit? And they'll just give me like nuggets of information. Like, yo, when we were at this point in our career, this is what we done. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, now I've got good relationships. That's the them. that's the wee nuggets of information that keep you dry because it's so easy to quit. Yeah. It's so easy to just shut the curtains and switch your lights off and, and just yeah. get a, norm, well, a normal job. But I, I just... Yeah, I can't do it. Do you know what I mean? I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> like, I've, I've got too much, not even pride, but I'm mm-hmm. too stubborn, innit? Like, I'm competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, yo, like... I'm going to show people, do you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I remember like my first song that didn't go the way I wanted it after Best Life was sponsored. And like the first week of it, I said, I remember like calling, me and Sam were like, yo, what the fuck happened? And um, we don't eat McDonald's, innit? Like, and I called Sam, he's like, yo, I just went drive through McDonald's. And, <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, we kind of, fuck this one innit? <laughs> um, like yeah like I don't know what we done wrong and I was like I don't know innit and then mm-hmm. I was in a week's time I said yo that's when I'm like had made Goot and Tog I was like nah fuck this like we'll we'll bounce back from it do you get what I'm saying mm-hmm. because I feel like kind of making my first mistake after such a run kind of eased off the pressure 
So like after Guten Tag, I was like, yeah, like what? If man fall off, I can come back. Do you get it? Like mm. if it, I'll come back. You know what's mm. like? I might not do everything perfect, but I'll always be here. Like as yeah. long as I want to be an artist, God willing, I'll be an artist. That's yeah. where the growth is, though. Mm. Your mistakes. Yeah. When you've made your first big mistake, what? See, it's the it's the, the the negative people that fuel me. It's the fucking yeah. haters that fuel me. Yeah. Like when everything's yeah. going great and smooth sailing, money's coming in. You've got everything's planned. Yeah. And you think it's fucking great. I'm the king, and then bang, something mm. happens. You do get into your shell for a few days, and you think, fuck this. But then you see, you look at the messages, and yeah. then you go, you know what, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to show them. So it's the negative, and it's so childish, but it is the negative people who fuel me. Yeah. Because everybody keeps waiting for me to fall flat in my face yeah it ain't gonna fucking happen 100 you know i, I mean? rate that i rate that i'm the same you know that like, mm -hmm. i'll be like like what really got me after sponsored i said i said to sam i was like um i was scrolling through twitter and i saw someone say hardy caprio is top three shittest rapper i was like <laughs> and i took that yeah and i was like no nah. i was like sam this one's a bit deeper and he was like Nah, it's just like a hater. And I was like, no, because he said I'm top three shittest rappers. So he's not trolling. He's thought about it. And he said, you might not be the shittest rapper in the UK, but on any given day, you are part of the top three shittest. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, nah. I was like, Sam, I've got to get like, I'm going to come back on this one, innit? I'm going to come back. So when we done Guten Tag, I was like, thank you very much. Like, there you go. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Take that uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. But yeah. it, is, it is childish, but that's where, where I can, that's where I'll mm. get my drive because it's easy just to fuck this because it's painful. Yeah. Social media is painful. 100%. Like they can post a great life, but in reality, the people really get to see the misery, yeah. the unhappiness when we're constantly thinking. I'm constantly thinking about work, numbers, mm. next guest, who can bring in numbers, who can take my business to another level? Yeah. How can I start this business? It's fucking non stop. Yeah, but then nice. I think, is it becoming an obsession? You've got to be obsessed to be the best at something. I think, I think yeah. you've got to master your craft, become the best and then add to it like mm. an octopus. Yeah. Like so many people try and do too, so, so many things at once and everything burns. But I'll master this. I'm, I believe I'm the best interview in the UK. I believe I, I'm taking, I'm making an interview and look fucking cool. I'm taking <laughs> things to new heights. As soon as I go to America, as soon as I go to America, I'm fucking taking over that shit. Yeah. This is only interviews. I just sit and talk to people Yeah. and I'm taking it to new fucking heights. Like, the hate that comes with it though is, is it's laughable as well but you think fucking scumbags yeah. why why do you know what i mean because i try and help people i genuinely do along the way mm. and then people you don't give them as much time as they think they deserve and then they yeah. start turning into hate people are angry that's what i'm saying people yeah. are angry at home bro and that's what you can't you you can't you can't stop winning for them minute do you get yeah. what i'm saying some people will be like oh why did hardy like like, why are you showing off your cars? And it's like, bro, because I worked for them, <laughs> innit? I worked for them, bro. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. So it's like, that. Like, what, you don't want to see me like sweat, sweating and like mm. going through like whatever I'm going through. But when I'm winning, you don't want to see it, bro. I hopped in the GTS, yeah. innit? Like, even on the Wes song, yeah, I said, yo, like the first verse that I dropped on it, I was like, um, I dropped, it was a completely different verse, innit? I'd done it in the live lounge. But I was like, yo, on the actual song, you lot are going to hear me flex. Like, they didn't want to see me flex. I hopped out of the GTS. Like, because that was, a, um, I got that car after the contract. I said, yeah, do you know what? I'm never going broke. I'm never going broke. You mm. get it? So, like, nah, it was a, bro, you got to show off sometimes. And at the yeah, same time, you can't let them mm -hmm. people, like, get, in, get into your head, bro. Yeah. They just want you to be as unhappy as them, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm... Um, I don't really go on social media a lot, innit? Like I've, um, until last week, I deleted it off my phone, innit? Because I'm like, do you know what? I'm at a point in my career where it's like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Do you get what I'm saying? And yeah. unfortunately, like, like I can't take in everyone's opinion, bro. Like imagine I cater for every thousands of people on my Instagram or thousands of people on my Twitter, bro. Like I'll be going in multiple directions. Yeah. And do you know what? make music for me you gotta look after well. yourself yeah yeah and make music for me as well in it and i'm like yeah cool so um even now bro i came back i came back on instagram i was done a post yesterday about uh like 
how um, we grew up in debt. Some guy commented, you didn't grow up, like, why are you saying that you grew up in debt? You didn't know what debt was when you were like, did it? I'm like, why are you so angry, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what but I mean? you can feel that energy. I, yeah. feel, I feel the tension. Yeah. Did you find it was a big part? Because I'm over 10 hours a day in my phone. Yeah. I, I, I say it's for my work, but it's not really. I could yeah. make a post and put my phone down. <laughs> why am I searching? What am yeah. I searching for? I'm feeding the energy. Yeah, it's yeah. becoming a major addiction. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've got people there who, can, who could work social media, but I want to interact. I feel as if when I don't, because there's some night, there's 99% nice messages, good people. But it's the 1% yeah, that, yeah, that charges yeah. you in it for the rest of the day. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to be like that. I'm like, nah, let me not do it no more because yeah. I want my music to come from that. Because music is emotions, isn't it? And if I do everything to prove someone wrong, mm -hmm. it's like, when am I going to tell my story? Do you get what I'm saying? Because when I was making music growing like growing up, I was just saying what was on my mind. Like I wasn't trying to prove people wrong. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what? Like for some people, it's like sometimes I can prove people wrong, but like song, songs like Best Life, songs like Unsigned, songs like Rapper, they came from when I was happy. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, do you know what? I'm... I'm a fly guy when I'm happy. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like my music does better when I'm in that state of mind. Yeah. Or sometimes you can reflect and talk about the depression stuff, but it's like, yo, those were like some beautiful moments, isn't it? Like you wouldn't make a song called Best Life if you weren't happy. Do yeah. you get what I'm saying? Mm. If I was on my phone all the time, probably wouldn't have made yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. you start getting annoyed at people. Yeah. And what happens is you'll feel as if you need to start rubbing in their face because yeah. that annoys them. So do you know what? Well, fuck you. I'm going to show you. But then you mm. lose your character. You lose, you lose who you truly are. And that's just it. You just love music. Yeah. What do you think your best song's ever been so far? Um, That's out. My personal favourite is Rapper, isn't it? Like, because I was like, this song from like top to bottom is like the most unique song I've ever made, isn't it? Um, I was like, best life, like I knew everyone would love it, but I was like, rapper, the way that like, I've come on that song, like straight away, it's like, you know who I am, you know what I'm about, you know I'm, I'm a bit cocky, you know everything, do you get what I'm saying? I'm going to make this shit look sexy. So it's like, says she want a baller, says she want an F boy, says she want a trapper. If I pull up in this A team plate, it's not going to matter. Like, and I love that because I made that a chorus. Like, it doesn't sound like it should be a chorus, but I had like, I was going up to Manchester, they were like, she must think I'm a rapper. I was like, I am a rapper, but that's <laughs> what done it for me. I was like, it's sarcastic as well. Like, it's hard to get sarcasm across in music. And I've done that. And I was like, yeah, like, and even the way um, the label took to it, yeah. Um, when we done it, I was like, yo, like, let's get this out to radio. They're like, oh, this isn't like a song for the charts. I was like, we'll see in it. First day, it got into, um, first week, got into top 40. I was like, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So I was just like, yeah, that was like one of my favourites still. How much control do you get when you write a song and you know it's going to be a banger and um, yet if the record label don't feel it, do they just pull the plug on it? To be to be fair, the way my situation is, we always have a conversation in it. So it's not like, oh, you're the bad guys like yeah. all the time. It's just mm -hmm. we, we see things different in it and I think it's just having a good conversation to get that across. How did your mindset change when you came off social media? Um, well, I was just happier, you know. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was yeah. just happier. I was like, yo, like, I realised, bro, like, bare people on social media, they're so angry that, like, Bro, I can say, yo, I wore some blue Jordans today and they'll be like, so what, you don't care about the planet? What, yeah. like, mm -hmm. so what, you um, you don't care about the kids in India? And I'm like, oh, I yeah. do, bro, but like, God, I just wore blue Jordans, bro. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy, bro, like, because I can afford to um, come off my phone and still live a life, like, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't care about other people's business that much. I don't care about like bringing other people down it just let me focus on myself and mm -hmm. like the people around me a bit more i was more present in conversations like because you know sometimes you can just be like yeah yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so it let me um appreciate things more mm -hmm. way more and i like yeah. i like that it's definitely dumbing people down i think social media and mm. i think since facebook and stuff's been around i think suicide rates went up 60 percent 
So people look at other people's lives and think it's great, this and that, and it can be depressing, especially yeah. other people's comments. So if they look, at, if they're depressed themselves and seeing other people living a great life, mm. they're going to fucking sling hate. And that, yeah. that is difficult. That's maybe something that I should take on board is maybe just deleting the apps and or just leaving it on a laptop where I can maybe just check it at night for one hour. It yeah. can be difficult. So, so far, great career. Yeah, so Very far, Very business no- knowledgeable. Everything's going great for you. Might mm. have had a couple of wobblers last year, but that's all part of your growth. It's never going it's to be smooth game, sailing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, plans for the future then? Give me it, brother. Um, so, like I said, drop the project this year. Um, see where it takes me. Probably do more property, do more investments, um, and just kind of enjoy it, you know, like as well. Like, take time to enjoy it, go on more holidays, travel, like, live my life a bit more. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Get more things to rap about, you know, just do more shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it going to be, when's an, an album going to pop, do you think? This year? No, this year. This Summer? Is, yeah. Um, Defo, yeah, definitely before summer. Mixture of everything, mm. happy, everything. What can yeah, you do? everything I can do. Yeah, everything I can do. To be honest, I hope tier four comes off and like I can just fly out a bit. Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Fly out, catch some peace, do some rapper shit as well. Do you get what I mean? Recharge. Cause, yeah, because you know what, like. As much as I'm smart, I like popping bottles as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I'm business minded, I want to pour champagne yeah. on, on on some booties. You get it? Like. Yeah, fuck it, you're still young, man. Enjoy it while yeah, I can. Thank you. Um, what about the boy? Is it H? H. Are you yeah. friends with him? Um, so we're cool. Like we're yeah. cool. We've seen each other a couple of times. Yeah. Don't speak all the time. Like, yeah, no, because I've seen yeah. you do a couple of interviews. That kid's flying yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, he's I mean? doing amazing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's good to see that young boys making it out and doing well for themselves. Mm. I don't get where the hatred comes from. Obviously, it's just yeah. pure jealousy. But yeah, people. You know just... what it is? Everyone thinks they can do it, and then you say you tell them do it, then because mm-hmm. I'm not stopping you, and they'll be like, "Oh, like the industry is blocking me," and it's like, okay, like you, everyone's crying, everyone's got excuses. Like we didn't have excuses, we didn't make excuses for ourselves. Why are you always making an excuse, bro? Yeah, you get it, and that's. Uh, you know, you know, people are always going to be angry, bro. There's always going to be someone that just watches like too much porn and then gets angry <laughs> at us. Like they're like, Sam. <laughs> 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 Sorry, bro. I had to. <laughs> so, um, before we finish up, brother, say yeah. anybody that's watching, maybe battling, struggling with mental health. What advice yeah. would you give for them? Um, I think it's just look at what you've got around you innit? it's easy to look at everything that you don't have but look at everything that you've got around you there's probably like your family will care or your friends will care and also it's like I think we're fortunate we live in the side of the world where there's so much opportunity like it can you can pick up a new skill tomorrow you can learn anything the internet's there it's just about trying do you get what i mean it's like if you stay if you just focus on what's bringing you down you'll never get up basically so it's just about yeah. finding a new way like there's always a way to find something yeah. new and how can people get on your social media it's just hard caprio at hardy caprio on youtube everything. channel what's that with your tunes hardy on hardy caprio everything yeah straight down the line yeah it's down the line yeah it's quite a right. unique name in it <laughs> <laughs> listen brother hardy for coming on today and telling your story yeah. brother thank very you, grateful brother. mate genuinely wish you all the best for the future same to you I'll, man. thank you and look forward to the new album brother yeah thank Cheers. you bro Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.